I hope that what I do is, is making a contribution to the contextual understanding of Christian Muslim relations in Syria and how those communities there, which are diverse, plural, have lived through a brutal, brutal conflict, which has become sectarian, of a kind, facing a kind of militancy that is increasingly happening all over the world, so it has global relevance. They have something to teach us, actually. The context has something to teach us. How has that relationship that context, if you like. How has it survived? It looks like friends, I think of friends who actually, for example, Sunni Christian uh, Shia teachers working together in the same school, who've always worked together, who have for years worked together who have had trust really challenged by the conflict, not sure where people's sympathies lie, political sympathies. Um, and yet really pained by the fracturing, by the suffering, by the violence that has happened. Um, but continuing to work together, continuing to socialise together. Um, a bit more difficult in those villages that have been, you know, devastated, that, that have actually seen sectarian violence. Yes. There, huge levels of trust being broken down. And yet at the same time, I've seen, um, for example, real willing embrace of Muslim members of the community that didn't take part or sympathize with the extremists. Yes. So not overwhelming, a recognition that what religious, in inverted commas, violence has happened, or violence in the name of religion has happened, is not religious in the yes. real sense of the term. Can you tell us a little bit about how this work, this research work, and these stories have reshaped your life as a follower of Jesus and as a priest, indeed. That's a really good question. I think I'm still learning how it's affecting me. And I use that in the present because it is affecting me. Um, I, it's, it's, it has remoulded very much. I, I, I think um, it's uh, being in Aleppo during the height of that conflict and witnessing and actually going into East Aleppo afterwards and meeting the people coming out and all that sort of thing um, actually has made me really, it has challenged me on the whole issues of war and violence and conflict and how we deal with that um, and also the misrepresentation of um, the use of media and all of that and how that's affected my faith in various aspects of society and even in the church I, you know so it's 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 a big question um, but I think the amazing thing is that actually When I'm struggling with the reality of seeing as an outsider the utter destruction of certain parts of cities in Syria or villages in Syria, or hearing the stories of the horrific things that uh, listening to people um, internally displaced and what they've experienced, um, which are beyond description, and then seeing their, their, their grief and the way their lives have been ripped, ripped apart. And yet, hearing them to speak in terms of hope and faith, yes. that is where it challenges me and strengthens me in, in, in 
faith. Um, and I think that it's made me, it's made me question um, the whole the whole question of, of right and wrong and black and white and good and evil. Uh, and there's huge evil. Um, but society, life, the world and everything, if you like, is so utterly complex. It's all part of God's creation. Yes. And all people are part of God's creation. And I grapple with that. So, so I, I, and, and what's been a huge shock to me is to be vilified for engaging with something because it's perceived to be a side. Mm -hmm. But I'm not engaging with a side. I'm trying to engage with people who happen to be part of a side, but actually are not all of a side, um, but because it's perceived to be that way. And yet we, we too easily put it there. Now that, that, that could be said on all, all issues. Now I think that raises very, very big questions about how we deal with conflict and how we deal with issues of reconciliation. What can churches and their religious partners do to help work a just peace in Syria and ensure that the country has a prosperous and vibrant future. Do you know, throughout the conflict, actually, the, the churches and the religious leaders have been doing a lot of work on the ground with their local communities. Um, they've been doing a lot of humanitarian work um, together. Um, but there's also been a lot of work engaging with the communities and with the divided, you know, divide, people with divided opinions and wherever there have been conflicts. But I've seen some amazing things happen on the ground. I remember in 20, we're back to 2014, to Homs. And I was at this at the height of the battles in Homs, where I attended a meeting of senior Sunni leaders and senior Shia sheikhs and bishops of various denominations and members of government figures and members of opposition figures and ex-fighters and things, all in a meeting trying to battle out some understanding, actually trying to come to some resolution. It was part of the process that led eventually to the ceasefire in Homs. Now, we had this meeting where, which was a very lively meeting, um, very lively indeed, but people were talking to each other. And faith leaders have also been involved in going into conflict areas and being in dialogue with people in conflict to try and stop, try and lay down arms, try and come to peaceful resolutions. Many, some faith leaders have actually been killed, uh, you know, murdered for, for, for their courage in doing so. What is the role of, of the churches in helping this community to reintegrate? This is where I get a little bit uncomfortable because I honestly don't feel it's for me to say. It's the Syrians who know the answer to that. Okay. And it's in their context, it's for them to answer that. Um, I, I, I know that, for example, so many times I've been told by, by ordinary people, Christians and Muslims and Kurds and you know, people of all communities, you know, please just tell people what it's like. Tell, tell the realities. Um, and please pray for us. Please be aware of the realities here and support us. Support us, help us, you know, help us rebuild. But don't come and tell us, <laughs> you know. Um, so so I, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to sort of give an answer to how do, how do they do that. That's not for us to, us to give that answer. How do we help them to do that? And I don't mean that in a paternalistic no, or no. imperialistic way. Mm. I think you, you've mentioned prayer. Yeah. Um, 
I think one of the things is to, to, to be aware that actually, and this has been recently said in a meeting in London, and I think it's really important. One of the things also I try to show in my, my thesis and, and the, sort of the, the mosaic of, of Syrian religious the landscape is, is the positive nature of that landscape. You know, um, the, the church there is not a victim. <laughs> Um, the church there is, goes back to the time of Christ. It's strong. It has been, it has suffered a lot. Um, and, but it's also, done, it's vibrant. It's living, it's serving. It's been there for centuries. It predates Islam. Everybody has lost so much and yet they are giving so much to, you know, serving hundreds of homeless people. Um, or providing food yeah. for hundreds of people in their communities when they have so little.